This just in, uh, this is from Ian Rappaport. The Browns are releasing Odell Beckham Jr. The two sides came together on a resolution to end his Cleveland tenure, and he'll be out and headed to waivers as we bring in Ben Roethlisberger, the quarterback of the Steelers. Steelers interested in Odell Beckham Jr., Ben? I have no idea. That is way, way above my favorite. <laughs> okay, when's the last time you weighed in on picking up somebody, a free agent or a draft pick? Um, I probably, I, I probably weighed in to coach T a lot through like a text on something. I don't, but you know, it's not like it's, Hey, get this guy or else it's just a, Hey, what do you think about this guy? Or maybe he'll shoot me a text. Um, do I know anything about this guy? But, but not, not a whole lot really. All right. Whose idea was it to have fun with coach Tomlin on the USC rumor? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, didn't you guys show up with gloves and fall? Oh, is that your fight on there? <laughs> oh, wait, oh no! I just was saying, hey, like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, yeah, I was um, because I had actually um, texted like earlier in the week. I think when the news like kind of I don't know what you call it, breaking news, whatever you say. When Carson put it out there, my agent called me and said, "Did you hear what Carson said?" And I'm like, "No," and he told me, and then. Um, Coach T just happened to – either called me or I called him. I think he was at his, at his um, out of town for some personal reasons. And I said, hey, I said, it looks like you got some things to, to talk about. He's like, what are you talking about? And he had no idea. And I told him, and he's like, are you serious? Like, it's news? I'm like, I think you're going to have to answer for it. And I think he was doing his press conference the next day, and that's when all this stuff came out. And so I was speaking to the media the day after that, and I was like, I, you know, I got to – I've been with Coach T long enough. I got to go. So – I was looking for like stuff in Juju's locker and I tried, I had, he had a sweatshirt, but it was a large and now it looked too ridiculous. So I just put, I put the gloves on and had them in my, in the hoodie. And I tried to just like, you know, tip the cab, just some very subtle things. So um, just have some fun. How did that, how did that go over with uh, coach Tom? He, you know what? Surprisingly, he never said anything. So maybe he didn't see it. Um, so next time I was going to, I was thinking about doing like some, just like literally any school that's got availability, I was going to try and do it and just see what happens. <laughs> well, Carson sent it, said it on my show. And I was saying, oh, okay. I was saying, Hey, you know, um, you, you know, are you uh, helping with uh, the, you know, getting, uh, you know, coaching candidates there? And he goes, yeah, you know, and you know, we're looking at a variety of guys and uh, he goes, uh, and maybe a wild card would be Mike Tomlin. And then he could tell from my reaction, he goes, Oh, you haven't heard that? And I go, no, and I don't think America has either. <laughs> oh, they, they had, he, they had, and he was, he was so. He's like, are you serious, Ben? I'm like, I'm telling you, you're going to have to answer for it. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I keep looking around the league, and it's a war of attrition. And we've added a 17th game. They're going to add an 18th game, but you'll probably be out of the league by then. But I mean. Does this make sense? I know that there's money attached, and that's the bottom line. But man, it. It's tough to stay healthy no matter how long a season is. It is. And I think my wife and I were just talking about this last week. Like, literally, every time you turn on the TV, whether it's the bottom line or breaking news or whatever, so-and-so gets hurt. So-and-so gets hurt. I get it's football, and I'm not trying to say it's because of the extra games or whatever it is or lack of preseasons or training camps or, you know, I don't know what – guys are bigger, faster, stronger. but. I mean, guys are just getting banged up left and right. And, and maybe it's no different than usual, but in my mind, it feels like it is. And you're right. I mean, it's, it's how can you get healthy at the right time, you know, towards the stretch of the end and enough to win games. And, um, you know, it's, it's golly, we went through it with a, we had groins and hamstrings there for a, a little stretch. And, um, you know, luckily those aren't as serious as some of the other ones that are going around right now. Okay, but it used to be that we would talk about you and it'd be, well, Ben Roethlisberger can extend a play. Like you would take on a defender, or have two guys hanging off of you. Are you still capable of, are you willing to do that or have you changed your strategy? Well, yeah, if, if it takes it to win. Did you see me go for that two-point conversion the other day? <laughs> I know you're confused with, you know, who was back there, but um, man, that you know, was quite an athletic game. move there that you had. No, I didn't say athletic. I said <laughs> there was no athleticism there. It was more about heart. And I'm oh, is that what it was? Oh, okay. That was your heart <laughs> on display. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. And mean... that, was, that was, that took about 15 seconds to run two and a half yards. So um, you can still but, outrun no, Brady you know, though, right? You can still outrun Brady. 
Uh, he gets weighed down by all those Super Bowl rings, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain Brady? I don't know. Um, you know, obviously the guy puts his body through avocado ice cream and all these crazy, you know, the craziness that he does. And um, I know that he puts the work in, the time, the effort, like through film study, through work, things like that. And um, golly, he's just, he's unbelievable. I, I don't know how to explain it. I wish I knew. He's five years older than you. I know. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. What do you think he'll be doing at 44? He'll, he'll stand in the pocket. It still blows my mind that he stands in the pocket sometimes, like completely flat-footed, looking around. Like, I feel like if I'm flat-footed for like a half a second, like someone's about to kill me. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I, it's unbelievable what he does. What will you be doing at 44? Um, being a dad and a husband and probably coaching Little League something. Um, I don't know yet. There's a, there's, that's that's a ways down the road. I was what? Well, how far down the road? Uh, well, I'm going to be 40 in in March, so it's like four and a half. That's that's a ways. Okay. Is that is that your way of trying to ask me if I want to play till I'm what? Because that's that's the most unique way someone's asked me how long I want to play. And how would you answer? I promise you, I won't be playing football at 44. Okay. <laughs> This just in breaking news, Ben Roethlisberger announces a retirement in five years. I can go with that? <laughs> well, I'll be playing football in the backyard with my kids. I'll probably be doing that. What do you do better now than you did 10 years ago? Um, man, I, I don't know. Probably read a defense. <laughs> um, you know, back then it was just, you know, use your athleticism, make people hang off you. I think you have to, you have to grow in that, in that area. I think, um, understanding, um, my teammates and men and, and trying to be a, a better leader. I think there's ways, um, and I've learned this through, through the many years I've played, there's, there's ways to motivate, to talk to, um, different guys and, and each guy's different. It's not like you just go talk to linemen the same and receivers. Is Literally, if you, if you learn and want to be a great leader uh, of men or of a football team, you have to learn how to speak to each person and what motivates each person. I think I've, I take pride in trying to know how to do that, how to pull a guy aside. Um, some guys, you just give them a look, you know, I, I, so I, I, I take pride in trying in leading um, football players and, and men. I obviously read into a lot factoring in how long you played, but I'm watching the, the game against the Browns last year in the playoffs and it was emotional for you. You know, you were crying on the bench and I thought this is it. You know, losing to the, you know, the, the team from your hometown. And then you beat the Browns last week. And then, like, there was true emotion in beating the Browns. Like, help me understand the significance of where you were last year in that reaction to where you are this year in that reaction, playing the same team. Well, you know, you hate to lose in the playoffs, right? We always say one team, only one team ends the, the season the way they want to. And, um, of course, some teams probably end the season. They just want to get done. But, um, you know, it's uh, sitting there with, with Pounce, knowing that um, it was probably it for him um, and, and what that guy meant to me. I think that was as much of the emotion as losing the game. Obviously, I hate to lose, so you get emotional. You hate to lose at home against the Browns, all those things, divisional opponent. But that guy sitting next to me just means so much to me. Um, and so – I knew it was going to be tough to, to get him to come back for another one. So that was part of the emotion of last year. And then this year, I think it's, it's going to a place that I've played many times. It's an AFC North opponent. I've won many times up there. And I told the guys after the game, the young guys especially, um, don't ever take winning up there against that team for granted. I've done it many times. I, I don't take it for granted. Like, that, that win meant as much to me as, as any of them just because of what you have to go through to win at that place. Um, the fans are awesome. Like, I, I, I'll never – you know, those, those fans are unbelievable. And so to go there where it's loud, where it's a good team, it's an opponent, that's why I think I had that emotion after the game because you just don't take it for granted. He's the Steelers quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, joining us. He's got the game Monday night against the Bears. Uh, with the Aaron Rodgers news, how what kind of safety protocol do you go through every single day? I have my tracer on, NFL tracer. Okay, so you know where I'm at. 
who I'm around. You can't take that off? Oh, you get, well, you can take it off like for a shower maybe, but you better have it on you. If you, if you leave in your locker for a second, they're going to bring it to you. So that's the, that's the, the one way I don't want to get fined. So I keep my tracer on. But you know, you got guys who are probably not vaccinated. Do they have a certain protocol? Like they go one way when you go in the building and you go another way. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know. Um, I, I, I think you're supposed to have your mask on if you're not vaccinated. I don't know who on our team is and isn't. Um, I, I know I am, so I, I don't have to have my mask on, but, um, you know, it's, you still have to live your life. Last year was such a bubble that we all lived in. It was so crazy. Um, we all sacrificed so much. People are still sacrificing obviously now in, in doing the smart thing, but I, um, you know, I'm still trying to live my life, uh, to the best, the, you know, best I can. I saw where you reached out to some quarterbacks in the off season. I think one of the Mannings, I don't know if it was Eli or Peyton, um, uh, I don't know if you reached out to Drew Brees, just sort of kind of understanding of what this moment means. And I was always told, if you're thinking about retiring, then retire. Uh, is that fair? Um, to a certain extent, I think you're, I think that's a, a fair point. Um, I think it depends on where you are in your retirement thinking or, you know, it's just what, you know, um, it, it, are you, are you sitting there saying, man, 50, 50, do I come back? Do I, you know, do I retire? If you're at that point, then you're probably right. If it's entered your mind that, okay, this, this could be it, or this is the last stretch, then, then I think you could probably, you could probably still do it. I think each person's probably a little different too, you know? When did your kids realize what dad did for a living? Um, probably about two years, my oldest one, probably about two years ago, he's, he's going to be nine. So probably about right about the six or seven mark when kids at school started to be like, Oh, your dad does this or, um, you know, going to games, like understanding people wearing your Jersey or people hollering at you when you're driving in the car or you go to a, go out somewhere and they're, they're hollering at you. The kids are like, I remember the first time someone like hollered, like, Big Ben. I, my kid was like, what, how does that hurt? Like, who is that dad? Okay. Does your son wear your Jersey or does he like another quarterback? No, he wears mine. Okay. He likes other guys. I mean, he's got like he's got a Claypool jersey. He had James Conner jersey, Juju. But he always, but it never fails. He always goes back to dad on game day. Have you brought out the Super Bowl he just, rings? He want big, big guy like he love. He wears his little like the. Remember, we all had the like the starter uniform, like the one with the little like rub the, the small helmet with the little bar, and the he's got like ninety on the side of his helmet, you know. So he's got a big DJ guy too, and, and he likes to hit his little brother. So he does DJ dance. <laughs> <laughs> is he going to be a quarterback? Um, I, he can, he's very talented throwing the ball. Uh, he wants to play football. We haven't let him play football. Not not let him, but we just haven't done it yet. Uh, he's a very good golfer, and so I think he might do golf. The younger one's going to probably be pretty good. He's a little wrecking ball. I have played golf with Ben, and uh, I think you were just starting out playing when we been first, a while. We got to do it again. When 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 we played in Tahoe, and I remember. Yeah. I, I tell the story, and I, I've said this to Breeze, too, because we played with Drew Breeze, and he's the most competitive. Like, how competitive was he that day? Very. Crazy. Very. Crazy. Yes. He bogeys the 18th, and Ben and I are finishing our hole. And, and Breeze, he might have parted. He didn't bird it. He walked off the green. And, 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 and so you're supposed to shake hands and all – and 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 uh, Breeze walks off, and Ben goes. Uh, I guess I'll shake your hand twice. I'll represent both quarter, quarterbacks. Playing. <laughs> he was intense. You can be competitive and still, you know, you can still shake a hand after a round of golf. <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh, and the next day I saw him on the driving range, and I thought, oh man, I he. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> he walks over and he goes, hey, Dan, I had so much fun yesterday. And I go, you did? He goes, yeah. I said, oh, okay, well, I did too. Me too. <laughs> I was like, what, what do you think of uh, Breeze's retirement here? Uh, from football? Yeah. Okay, I'll say, did some new news happen? Did no, the new, from his, his hair, his Oh, is, oh, is there something different there? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right, I got it. All right, fight on. <laughs> fight, fight on. Something like that. 
Hey, uh, you make time every year to come on. Thank you. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hopefully you play as long as you want to play. But uh, thanks again. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Let's get golfing sometime again. Thank you, bud. We'll find a third. Yeah, another quarterback. Let's find another (laughs) quarterback, not Breeze. Uh, Thank you, Ben. That's uh, Ben Roethlisberger, the Steelers and the Bears. That'll be coming up on Monday.